está para ti, Deus. Mars. Mars. Okay. How did he die? Violence is nothing new in this country, but no one was prepared for what happened here on the night of March 11. <laughs> دوی چه بگاری کلی دیا و کشنهای او بیرد دلی دی دیر بیرد دلی دی بیخیک کشنهای ادش پس میشه کشنهای بیرد دلی دی اگه چه بگاری کلی دیا مرکان وره غلی دی داغ پرخلا بانی تو پنچانی ولی ده. The massacre of 17 Afghan civilians has unleashed a wave of grief and outrage. A U.S. soldier is now in custody, charged with the murders. But what really happened here? Did this man act alone? Or were others involved as he walked from house to house, shooting men, women and children in their beds? I want to find out more about this atrocity and to see for myself where the killings took place. I travelled to the Panjwe district, an hour's drive from Kandahar. It's a treacherous journey in the heart of Taliban country. When investigators first visited the scene of the killings, they were attacked by the Taliban. An Afghan National Army soldier was killed. At a base near the villages, I'm told the area is now laced with Taliban mines, too dangerous to visit. Well, all the cars you might see as go, you make an end go, Jay pass clear can end. I'm turned back to the relative safety of Kandahar. The next day, an Afghan police team picks a path for me through the booby trap roads and fields. I follow the steps of the man who came here on the night of March 11. I'm the first Western journalist to make it here. The massacre took place 20 kilometres southwest of Kandahar. The Special Forces base of Camp Balambi is close to the villages of Alakaze and Najiban. Investigators believe the gunman left the camp that night armed with an automatic rifle and a pistol. He walked to Alakaze, less than a kilometre away, entered two houses and opened fire. It's taken us two days to get to the village of Alakaze and after questions about IEDs, mines and booby traps, we finally managed to arrive. Inside one of the houses, I find evidence of just how terrifying that night must have been. The fear the people inside must have felt, as one after the other, they were targeted and shot. Could you just tell us, Indochina, Suspicion that there was more than one killer is now a view widely held in Afghanistan, spurred by comments from the president himself. In four rooms, people were killed, children and women were killed, 
and then they were all brought together in one room and then put on fire. That one man cannot do. I'm guessing, assumption, that he is helped by somebody. One person or two person. Hamid Karzai's personally appointed chief investigator, General Karimi, tells me that village elders claim several soldiers took part and they've told him there's evidence to prove it. What they claim is that there were uh, uh, boot prints mm -hmm. in the area. Then in some area they see the uh, kneeling position of three, four individuals. And also they claim that the helicopters were there to support the operations. Of course, I, I told him that helicopters went when uh, the guy was started missing to give, to search him. Mm -hmm. They said no, the knives of the helicopters were from the very beginning when the shooting started. So that means there were many Americans, they were supporting this issue, they were doing this, uh, you know, deliberately, it's not in one individual. So that's the claim of the people. I wanted to ask survivors of the attack what they had seen, but I was blocked by the US military. The survivors were children, I was told, and the Americans now treating them said they didn't want them traumatized by my questions. It was only after personal intervention by President Karzai himself that I was finally granted permission to see the survivors and to hear the chilling accounts of what they'd been through. As eight-year-old Nuri Banak watched her parents desperately trying to fend off the intruder, he turned his gun on her and shot her in the leg. I'm struck by her reference to more than one soldier being involved, a claim repeated by the brother of one of the victims. American was telling the Khuni Sakha. That was my daughter. She knew why. My daughter was telling me, "Pah, pas rai ki dear tsiraghan da Americanu pas saruki lagedala, aw da topakano pah khluki pah da kiam tsiraghan lagedala." No, this is an example of the pinzala swa shalwa atsuni chwa. Staff Sergeant Bales left the scene of the killings in Alakuze village and walked in the darkness back to the base. It was 1.30 a.m. when he arrived. He was spotted by Naimatullah, an Afghan guard on duty at the base that night. The killing could have stopped here. Naimatullah alerted a fellow Afghan soldier who tried to get a message to the Americans. President Karzai's investigator is now trying to piece together what happened next. He's suspicious that Bales was able to come and go without his fellow Americans noticing. How come he leaves at night and nobody's aware? I mean, every time we have uh, weapon accountability, we have uh, individual personnel accountability. So if this were boy, were, this young man was not there, and then somebody must have known his friend, his roommate, you know, uh, and must have reported that this guy is missing. 
Bales then spent a full hour back at the base. What he did during that time isn't yet clear. But he hadn't finished killing. At 2.30 a.m., he left Camp Balambi a second time. He headed to the village of Najibon to the south, about one and a half kilometers from the base. He was spotted by another Afghan guard as he walked into the night. The soldier entered the house of this farmer, Mohammed Wazir. Eleven family members were asleep inside. Bales was spotted once more by an Afghan guard as he walked back to the base from the village. As I'm speaking to the Afghans about the killings, Bales's lawyer appears on American television, casting doubt on a trial that could still be years away. There's, you know, there's no forensic evidence, there's no a medical examiner's evidence. Um, there's no evidence about how many alleged victims or, or where those remains are. So, you know, it's, it's fascinating from a defense lawyer's perspective. You know, prove it. Investigator General Karimi is angry that Bales is no longer in Afghanistan to be questioned over the massacre as he hears claims from villagers that Bales had recently threatened to kill them in revenge for a recent attack. Three days, four days, that's what they said. Before this incident, uh, one of the uh, US vehicles was hit by mine in a village called Makwan, which is in that vicinity, in that area. One of uh, American soldiers lost his leg. He was amputated. Uh, this guy happens to be a very close friend to this uh, individual, Robert Bale, you know, mm -hmm. close friend to this guy. And he had uh, called the people, he had gone to the village uh, and told the people that he will revenge his friend. He will shoot everybody and he will revenge his friend. That's another issue that the people claim. I travel back to the city of Kandahar, where I want to speak to one more survivor. Amina, not her real name, now lives here with her six children in a mud hut with no electricity. Of all the stories I heard on this trip, hers was the most wrenching account of how the killings have changed this country and how Afghan people now view the soldiers who had promised to help them and protect them. Mm -hmm. 